Rebecca Sargianis, and I'm here today with Ivan Crum Jr. Hello. Hi, how are you? Pretty good, can't complain. How are you feeling today? I'm okay. Word. Well, we're here today because we want to talk about your art. Oh, mm -hmm. so special. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Um, well, I'm a 21-year-old struggling artist from PG County, you know. I go here at PG Community College. Mm -hmm. I'm an art major. Cool. Um, I don't know. I like to take long walks on the beach. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just chilling and whatnot, being doing things the artists do. Cool. You know, burn the paintings, you know, stay alive in the cold, cold recesses of our cold, cold homes. All right. Uh -huh. I'm joking, of course. <laughs> but no, seriously though, I'm just, I'm just a normal guy. I just like, I really, really enjoy like um, the draw and paint and stuff like that. Well, how old were you when you started drawing? Uh, let's see. I was about maybe 11. And the first thing I remember ever doing was like, I did like a small little comic book. Mm. Like it was like, it's my own little interpretation of like Spider-Man and stuff, right? So it was Spider-Man saving the day, mm -hmm. someone breaking, breaking into a bank with the help of Iron Man. Of course, awesome. I have no idea what that thing is, but that's the first thing I ever remember drawing. Very cool. Um, how long have you been here at PGCC? Well, um, and I came here originally in the summer of 08. Then I went, came back here in 09. And then in 2010, I went to Art Institute of Washington, which was a really bad idea. So I went, well, I came back here in uh, 2011, and you know, 2012, I'm here again. Is this something you want to like make a career out of? Well, art, yeah, yeah. man. I want to be. Um, well, I want to do a few things in art. Actually, I want to open my own gallery. I want to become a freelance illustrator, illustrator, and go into character design. Basically, awesome. be the person you know, coming up with the ideas for the comics and the video games and the animated movies and mm -hmm. all that jibber jabber and all that jazz. So you have a pretty good idea about what you want to do. Yes, yes. I've had awesome. a lot of time to think about this. Apparently. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you, uh, how, how do you like the art program here at PGCC? Well, let's just put it like this. The art program at PGC is 10 times better than the art program at Art Institute of Washington. Wow. Saying a lot. It's saying a lot. <laughs> a lot. If you have gone to Art Institute of Washington, you understand what I'm saying. Uh huh. All right. Well, um, you recently had a piece that got put into the school gallery. Yes. You want to talk about that? Um, yeah, sure. Um, it's called uh, The Blackest Night. I, it really no special thing behind it, guys. It just I just something I thought of on the fly. But pretty much, it was my first major like piece that was multimedia. Like it was uh, pens, pencil, ink, and paint all mm -hmm. put together. And it was showing off my own form of character design. So I just I drew one picture. I liked it. Then I made a polling piece to it. Then I put them together, framed it, submitted it, and they apparently. PG liked it, and so they put it in the show. Oh, that's great! So you you um just you had to submit it yourself. Yes. To because um, um in basically in all art classes you have to submit something. Okay. Part of your grade, and so I was like, all right, I'm gonna submit this. And they liked it. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. All right. Well. Uh. What does your does your talent run in the family? Do you have any other family members? Well, actually, my dad draws. I don't know if he does it much now anymore, but my dad is a um he's a, a freelance illustrator, but he doesn't really do doesn't really like go into it much, stuff like that. Okay. Um, what would you say your inspiration is? Like what what like makes you want to draw? Well, my inspiration would probably be like, you know, standard things most artists have. The birds, the bees, the trees, the water and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Plus what me would be, just you know different illustrators, Comic books, video games, anime, cartoons, all that good stuff. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you paint nature sometimes, or do you? No, that's like boring. <laughs> that is so boring. I can't. I tried it once. Uh -huh. Ridiculously boring. I stopped, and I, I just like, I don't want to do this anymore. So you mainly do characters. I mainly do, yes, characters. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, what, what are you gonna draw here today? Do you have an idea about well, what it's gonna be? I kind of just kind of go with the flow. But uh, I'm, since I'm doing this for the lovely lady right there, I think I'm just going to see if I can think of something very, very special for her. Why, why are you doing her a uh, picture? Because it's her birthday tomorrow, oh, man. Oh, that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, when we come back, uh, we're actually going to do a little bit of drawing, and he's going to show us his technique. Um, and so that's about it, and we'll see you when we come back. Stay tuned. Hello, 
and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Rebecca Sargianis, and we are back with Ivan Crumb Jr. What's up? Hi, and we're going to be painting today. Uh, what materials are you going to be using? Well, I have a nice little selection of uh, some watercolors. I have uh, some pencils. Mm -hmm. I have some markers. And I have some water. And you're going to be using all of these in the same painting? Well, I'm going to try to, yes. Okay. Is, is that what you usually use? Well, actually, I use as a combination of all kinds of things. Yeah. 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 Um, did you have some artwork to show us that you've already done? Yeah, sure. I have a few things I can show you guys. Well, here's, here's one thing right here. This is called Pie Eye Girl number five. <laughs> yeah. Pie Eye Girl? What yeah, pie, yeah, Pie Eye. Pie oh, eye. is that yeah. what you call it? Yes, Pie Eye. The Pac-Man eyes? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. like old-timey 1950s cartoons. Yeah. yeah. This is the fifth one in the series. The other three, no, other four, I'm sorry, are at, at home. Okay, the colors are very different um, on the thing versus the, the one that you already have. Do you mm -hmm. usually switch up your color palette that much? Well, 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 I pretty much work with whatever I can find. Okay. So this was done with acrylics while I have watercolor with me. Today. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, um, I guess what? How do you how do you usually get started? Do you know what you're gonna do? Well, before you start, sometimes I kind of just wing it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of with certain things, I just start off with a basic pattern. For instance, I start off like a circle. Start off with a head, and then for what for this case that we're doing right now, I'm just gonna do like um, a, a just simple person. Okay. So like maybe I'll give this person like a long neck, you know, because. Because I can. Uh -huh. Sure. <laughs> All right. So then come in with the shoulders. So shoulders. Then I'll come in, put an ear right here. Come in, put ear right here. Uh, let's make this a girl. All right. So put some mammary glands right here. You like the outside of them. And uh, there we go. Let's uh, start doing the dialogue on her face. Come in, put a nose. Okay. I feel like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> Good. This is for you, Bob. All right. You know Bob hated doing portraits. Yeah, I know, but it's all for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's come in, let's give her a smile. Right. Nice little smile. And uh, let's come up, let's give her. I like to, when I, when I, I'm very like cartoony, mm -hmm. if you haven't checked already. But, and let's give her some nice big old anime eyes. Do you ever uh, do uh, do something really realistic or do you really? I mean, with sometimes I do, but it's more fun to do cartoons. Fair enough. Yeah. So, go to the boardwalk, do characters of people. Let's give her outlines of her eyes. Let's give her some gauges because she's a cool kid. All right. What about some piercings? Get the top of her ear. Let's get one right here. Middle of her ear. All right, this is where this is something I, like a, a style of drawing I've called. I'm calling it more like tribal because uh -huh. I give the like characters like tribal tattoos. All right. So I'll come on her neck. I'll give her like a, a pattern of some sort. Like for here, I'm going to do some triangles. Then you know, very tribal. So give her since she has a long neck. Let's give her one of those little neck bracelet things oh, go cool. around her neck. And then uh, let's give her a nose ring, a septum. Cause you know, that's the new fashion all the kids wanna wear nowadays. Is it? Yeah, yeah. for some reason everyone wants to get a septum. You no, know, I have been seeing it a lot lately. Yeah. For some reason, I don't understand why people want to get them cause they hurt so bad. Have you had yours done? Nah, nah, I'm not about that piercing life. <laughs> and how do you know it hurts so bad? Cause I've been told by people who have had septum piercings before it was cool that, you know, it hurts. All right, let's give her some small little triangle tattoos right here. Shading right here. And uh, we'll do her hair like your hair. Can y'all see this? Because if y'all can, 
Put it. <laughs> Bring it a little bit here down here. And come in. Nice little short cut. Give her some, let's give her some accessories of some sort. Uh, not really used to drawing in quiet. It's <laughs> cool Sorry. It's all right. Do a little piercing. Give her a little bit. So they can really show up her eyes. Oh, that looks really cool. Yeah. So what? Well, how would you describe your uh, your style? It's slightly uh, psychedelic, definitely pretty modern, and yeah. like cartoon. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of I kind of just try to blend all yeah. different kinds of styles together, like psychedelic cartoons, mm -hmm. as I like to call it. Like, it's like psychotunes. Psychotunes. That sounds pretty cool. Let me <laughs> see if I can patent that. Don't worry, you're gonna get some residuals. Oh, good. Yeah. Give her like tattoo sorts in her face. You know, she goes hard to paint. Do you ever name your drawings? Yeah. Yeah. Every true artist gives a. Uh, well, not really. Let me take that. Back. I mean, what? name your characters, I guess. Yeah. yeah, I'm a character designer. I have to come up with names for characters and stuff like that. Because they would just be scribbles on a piece of paper without <laughs> personality. The, uh, the girl you just showed us, does she have a name? Well, no, no. She's just a part of the, a series of paintings okay. of, of pie-eyed girls. You know, girls with pie eyes that, you know, are done in paint. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh... Um, you've mentioned before that you're a, you're a self-taught artist, so you started painting for a long time, far before you ever had any instruction? Yeah, well, I kind of figured that I wanted to do this whole Thing by myself and not really be taught anything because I feel like if I was taught anything mm -hmm. I would be forced to do something I didn't want to do when I can just do just sit here and draw whatever I want and with time I progression with progression comes you know better skill and that's pretty much what I've been doing because you know at, for, at one point I didn't draw like this and mm -hmm. I wasn't getting praised for being a good artist but at the time practice and looking into the things that I really actually care about, then, you know, I was able to do this. Like, stuff like paintings about trees and mountains and stuff like mm -hmm. that, that's boring. So portraits are okay, but the only reason I really learned how to draw by people was so I can get anatomy right, because best believe that's really, really difficult. Uh -huh. Hands, feet, it's like, would drive a person nuts. I'm trying to paint that, draw that. All right, now I'm about to, Add some color to the background. Nice little green. See if you can, you can't really see this because it's watercolor, but I'm gonna go back in. And Do you have to put multiple coats of paint? Yeah, that's the pain part. Mm. And sometimes you can't use a lot of water. Sometimes you gotta use a lot of water. Sometimes you don't use water at all. But it's definitely a process. A lot of people like to work with like, like all kinds of stuff. I like to have like a set arsenal of things that I use for a particular piece. What does that mean, a set arsenal like, of materials? Yeah, like a set thing of like I, I come, I figure out exactly what I want to use and I stick to that for a, the, a particular piece. Mm -hmm. but I don't want to add too much, and at the same time, I don't want to have too little. So this, I'm going to keep it simple. Some watercolors in the background. Touch it up with some ink, and puts go through. Mark it up with some Prismacolors and some regular Crayola markers. Great. And then, uh, you know, work it out. 
Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I wish I could see if I could get my own TV show. Yeah. Like Bob Ross. That'd be pretty cool. I would definitely watch that. I think, thank you, thank you. I hope it's not on PBS, though, because I don't know if a lot of people watch PBS. I'm not, I'm not even sure how to go about that. You should look into it, though, because there's not a whole lot of that, I feel, especially someone as young as you to have a, a show like mm. that. Mm. Get the young audience. That probably would. I'll probably pull in, you know, the hipster crowd. Because <laughs> everyone thinks I'm a hipster for some reason. So they see a hipster painting wonderful pictures, you know, they might think, hey, this is something I want to watch. Because, hey, Odd Future got their own show. And that show is pretty much the same show you've seen before. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the actual name of the show. Because it's kind of like cussing. I'm not I know being quite cussing. sure. Uh, what, who would you consider some of your favorite artists uh, who you really like their work? All right, I'm going to get the easy ones out the way first. All right. Picasso. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, I'm just going to keep it like that. Picasso. Picasso, because <laughs> actually we recently got finished doing a project about Picasso, and I've learned actually a lot from him and how he does his work and how he does style. Because Picasso over the years always changed up his style. He never kept it the same, which I really dig about him. But, and then there are other artists like uh, uh, Jeffrey Cruz, he's an illustrator for uh, Udon uh, Comics, which is the, a group who does comic books for, you know, Capcom video games like Street okay. Fighter and Dead or Alive and stuff like that. And then there's um, this artist named Sailor FCP. He is an illustrator from uh, at somewhere in Asia, I believe. I want to say, I'm going to say Taiwan, but I'm completely, completely, completely wrong. So do not quote me on that. And then I get a lot of influences by graffiti artists like Shepard Fairley and um, Coke 2 and uh, Futura. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen the John Mayer music video, uh, Waiting for the World to Change. I haven't. Really? That's a great song, by the way. Like, uh, he's actually in that music video doing a painting for John Mayer. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I also, well, of course, Bob Ross, because he's the guy who actually is kind of the, the first artist i ever really seen. Uh -huh. Yeah, because my dad was watching Bob Ross one day and started watching it with him. It was pretty cool. You know, he was just so relaxed and chill. Yeah, I have uh, I have very good um, positive nostalgia uh, memories of watching Bob Ross as a kid. Mm. If you guys have not seen The Joys of Painting, you should totally watch that. You should go down, sit down, make some hot cocoa, and just enjoy this man painting a wonderful picture in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider doing video game design? Yeah, sure. That's one of the things I want to do. I always wanted to work for a company like, uh, I want to say Capcom, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I would never want to work for Capcom because they're terrible people. But like, I would want, I definitely want to be that guy to creating the character that everyone loves. I kind of want to be like the guy who makes the next like Mario or the next Sonic. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, I don't know, the next Dante from Devil May Cry. There's a character that everyone like can dig. Can. Like, hey, 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 the character's cool. And Dante's yeah. the best. Well, I don't know about the best, but yeah, he's pretty daggone cool. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little bit too much water. Sometimes you make mistakes. You kind of just got to pile through it. So when you're um, when you're doing these these paintings at at home, just when you're chilling out, what do you usually you said you usually don't work in silence. What music do you usually usually listen to? All right, I have this gift with the ability to listen to anything. Is it a gift? I believe so because there aren't a lot of people who can. I listen to stuff that ranges from old school rap like Wu Tang Clan and Biggie and Big Pun to like. Classical music like I don't know Beethoven and stuff like that, and then it goes to like 1950s era music like Frank Sinatra and um, Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald. Then I can go and hop to a completely different you know country, and you know I'll like listen to like some K-pop. Like uh, you ever seen the movie Ninja Assassin? Uh, I did actually. I saw it in theaters. Well, the main character in Ninja Assassin, he is a Korean pop star named Rain, and he has 
a very wide selection of good music. Um, since we don't have a whole lot of time, uh, can we start to see what her face looks like? Oh, oh well, yeah. I guess I'll just see if I can. Go through. <laughs> I don't want to mess up your process. No, that's all good, man. Kind of works sporadically. It's kind of dangerous, isn't it? Filling, um, doing the outlines with a marker. Well, I guess you already have the man. lines. You gotta be very precise and you know, very close up. Kind of have to really get into it, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm about to switch markers for this one's about to dry out. See, see what this one's working with. Mm -hmm. New shoes, new shoes, new shoes. You listen to a large variety of music. What have you been into lately? What Let's see. Playing? I've been listening lately. I've been listening to Das Racist, which is a underground rap group of two MCs from uh, India. Uh -huh. I've been listening to Frank Sinatra, because that's my man's. I've been listening to The Joy Formidable, which is a hardcore band with a female lead singer. I've been listening to, I don't know. Let's see what else I've been listening to. Oh, I've been listening to 2 Chains because I recently got into him. He's cool. I don't really listen to a lot of mainstream rap music, but I dig him. Only because he actually raps about things that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I never rephrase that. Not things that matter, more like things that actually, you know, matter to him. And I can respect that, because he's about what he talks about. I'm about getting money. He has a master's in business. Not a lot of rappers can say that. And, you know, be respectable about it. Sure. I've been listening to uh, Kanye West, because Kanye West is cool. Hope one day to meet that guy. I hope he's not a douche like everyone says he is. <laughs> I uh, I only know of what I've seen of him in the media and uh, his appearances on a uh, certain um, award shows that don't look great. Yeah. Talented guy though. Yeah, very talented guy. Makes wonderful music. I feel like maybe people just don't really know the real Kanye. Maybe mm -hmm. one day. They can meet him and understand that he's not the douche everyone thinks he is. All right, just want to get the face out the way so everyone can see it. You understand? <laughs> Like to go in, like to darken things in. They like they need to be darkened in, like right off the bat. She's so that gorgeous. Way. Huh? I love how you did the hair. Thank you. You know, you know how some people when they, they who use markers, when their marker starts to dry up, they throw it away. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. I like to keep my markers after they well when they start drying up. That allows me to go in and make a base color with the marker. What, so you recycle them? Well, sort of. I kind of don't really get rid of them. I kinda, I'm kind of a pack rack when it comes to markers. Because I can do a base color with one marker and then come through with another marker and it will give it a kind of a brighter tone. Well, we don't have a whole lot of time now, so we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, Word. Glad that we got to see as much as we did. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Not a problem. Ivan, All right. it's been a pleasure. Have, all right, I hope you guys have me back. Okay, this right. is Rebecca Sargiana signing out. Thank you. How many times do I keep doing this? Mm, you can stop. You don't have to. You don't have to keep doing it.